Hi, my name is Erica Gamet. Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to look at some more grep searches in InDesign. We're going to look for how to find characters uh, as a range, so a range of letters or a range of numbers. We're also going to be able to look at individual character searches when we don't know what order those characters appear in in our text. Let's go ahead and jump into InDesign and check it out. Sometimes you might need to find an entire range of characters when using a grep search. So you may be searching for any digit and you can use the backslash D, which does mean any digit, but you could also look for a range of numbers, for instance, anything from zero to nine. And that's the, that would be the same thing as looking for backslash D or any digit. But what if your range was smaller? and you're looking for, let's say, a range of numbers that is from three to eight. Or maybe you're looking for a range of letters. You're going to go from A to Z or A to F or M to T. So we can set that up using what's called a character class or a character set in grep. And then we can tell it to find that range. To indicate a character class or a character set, we use the square brackets. And everything inside there becomes uh, the range, and we set the range um, with a hyphen. So we tell it from this to that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna zoom in so we can actually see the grep window a little bit better. And I wanna find a range of numbers. So off to the left, I have all the digits there. And if, again, if I want to find each individual digit, I could just do backslash D, which is any digit. But I might wanna find a range of digits. So I'm gonna put an open square bracket, and I can put zero, and then put a hyphen, nine and end brackets and then when i do a find on each of that find next find next and i'm going to make sure i have just this frame selected and choose uh, to search by story i'm going to say find next find next and it goes through each digit like i said that's the same exact thing as choosing backslash d for any digit so let's change that up a little bit instead let's say that we wanted to go from three to eight and that's all we wanted to find so we'll say find next find next find next. Right, so it finds everything from three to eight and then it's done with its search. I can do the same thing for letters. Let's instead come in here and do our open bracket and I do A through Z. Now what that's going to do is that's going to find lowercase a through lowercase z. So we do find next, find next, and it goes through and finds each of those in that particular um, set of string of letters. Let's shorten that a little bit so we're not looking for the entire alphabet because we could have just done backslash U, or I'm sorry, backslash L for any lowercase characters. So let's say we want to look for A through F, and we can also do a set second range inside this same character class. And let's say we want to actually go from capital M to capital T as well. So we're going to look for both of those. I'm going to go ahead and select this frame, tell it to search by story, and say find next, find next. So it's going A through F, and then it's going to jump down and find M through T as a capital. So we can put all of that inside that range. Now you notice that it's offset by a hyphen. And so the hyphen is used to denote this range. But one thing you might notice it didn't ever find down here was this hyphen. So I have some punctuation down here and it didn't find the hyphen. And that's because it's smart enough to know that when it's in a character class, the hyphen in the middle of a range set is just denoting that there is a range that, it, that we're um, defining here. If we want to look for an actual hyphen, we need to put that at the beginning of the character class. So I'll put a hyphen at the very beginning. And now when I do that same exact search, it will go through and find A through F. We'll jump down and do M through T, and it will also find that hyphen down at the bottom here because it's looking for that specifically. Now, that doesn't actually fit in the range idea of character class because I've just said look for this range of letters and also the hyphen. So that's something else we can do with this character class. It doesn't have to be just a range. It can just be a whole string of characters that we want it to find or items that we want it to find. We'll make sure we have the open up, opening uh, paragraph there. And we can say individually, I would like to look for specific characters. So let's look for the numbers 2, 
five, nine, and then also we could do A through F, and then also let's do a, a lowercase um, V, and maybe an E, actually we already have E included in there, so let's do V, and we'll also do uh, Y, and then let's also do some capital letters as well, B and Z and R, all right? So we've just got sort of a mix of characters here. Go ahead and select this item, and we'll say find next, so it finds two, and five, and nine. It's also going to find A through F. It's going to find the letter V, the letter Y. It's going to jump down and do B, and Z, and R. All right, so found it obviously in order. Finds an order of the text, not in order of how we created our character class. So that's one way of doing it. So um, again, with grep, we have different ways of doing it. I could say, look, find two, five, and nine, or I could say, find two, which may or may not exist, five, which may or may not exist, or nine, which may or may not exist. Um, and I can do those separately if I want, or by using a zero or more times uh, indicator. But in this case, if I throw it inside the character class, I can just put any string of characters that I think I wanted to find, and it will find it for me. And remember, if you want to use a hyphen as an actual literal hyphen, you need to put it at the beginning so that it knows it's not denoting a range. The other advantage to using a character class over using the, um, if I were looking for two, zero more times, followed by five, zero more times, is when I use the zero more times and I put that string, I'm telling it it appears in that order. With a character class, I'm just saying it could appear anywhere. Look for it anytime it appears, not necessarily in this order. So if I put in the numbers two, and nine and four, I'm not telling it that's the order it goes in. I'm just saying look for a two or a nine or a four, and I'm not even concerned with what order it appears in. So that's the advantage of using a character class. So that's how to find a range of characters or just a random set of characters that you might be looking for by putting them within the solid brackets, I'm sorry, the square brackets, and creating what we call a character class. Hopefully you can see where a search like that might come in handy in your workflow. Being able to find by range is nice because then we can narrow down our search. Also, sometimes we don't know what order the characters appear in, so being able to put those into a subset and just find a set of characters that way is super handy. If you liked the video, be sure and give it a thumbs up so I know that this was content you want to see. And if there's something else you'd like to see in future videos, be sure and leave me a comment in the comment section below. Or you could hit me up on social media. I've got all my links over here off to the side. And lastly, you could also click on my name down below. That goes to my website and you can contact me through there. And finally, be sure and subscribe. That way you get notified every time I release new content, which right now is every Wednesday. So I hope you'll join me next time. And until then, bye-bye.